Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using consistent deformation method. In this beam, there are two spans, span AP and span BC. In the span AP, there is a point load 80 kN in the center. In the span BC, there is uniformly distributed load 60 kN per meter. It is acting for the whole span. Length of span AB is 6 meter and the moment of inertia is 1.5 i. Length of span BC is 4 meter and the moment of inertia is 2 i. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the point B, there is a hinged support. And in the point C, there is a roller support. In this beam, the number of unknown reactions and movements are 4. In the point A, there is a movement MA and the vertical reaction RA. In the points B and C, there are vertical reactions RB and RC. The degree of static indeterminacy will be 4 minus 2. We will get 2. In the previous problem, we have removed RB and RC. But in this one, I am going to remove the movements from the point A and from the point B which are MA and MB. When we remove both of them, the continuous beam becomes two separated simply supported beams. Now let us draw the coordinates diagram. Let us keep MA as the first coordinate and MB as the second coordinate. Let us assume that both of them are hogging moments. About AB, MA would be acting in the anticlockwise direction. The moment MP about BA would be acting in the clockwise direction. And about BC, it would be acting in the anticlockwise direction. These are the two equations we are going to use in the consistent deformation method in the given beam. In the points A and B, there is no other external movement or any other rotation. So, delta 1 and delta 2 will be 0. MA is our first coordinate. So, P1 will be MA and MB is our second coordinate. So, P2 will be MB. In these two equations, first we are going to find delta 1L and delta 2L. Delta 1L and Delta 2L are the displacements due to the loads. In this analysis, we have removed the movements. So, Delta 1L and Delta 2L will be the slope values. Delta 1L is the slope in the point A, that is Theta A. And Delta 2L is the slope in the point B, that is Theta B. To find these two slopes, we are going to use the conjugate B method. In the conjugate B method, we have to draw movement upon EI diagram. First, let us take the beam AB. If in the simply supported beam, point load is acting in the center, the formula to find the maximum bending moment is WL upon 4. Here W is 18 and L is 6. We will get 120 kN meter. Let us find M upon EI. M is 120. In AB, the moment of inertia is 1.5i. So, instead of EI, we have to apply 1.5EI. We will get 80 upon EI. Now, let us take the beam BC. Here, uniformly distributed load is acting. We know the formula to find the maximum bending moment is WL square upon 8. Here W is 60 and L is 4. We will get 120. Let us find M upon EI. M is 120 and EI is 2EI. Finally, we will get 60 upon EI. Since it is uniformly distributed load, the diagram will be in the shape of a parabola. In the conjugate beam, let us keep this point as A dash, these two points as B dash, and this point as C dash. 
we have to find the vertical reactions Ra dash, Rb1 dash and Rb2 dash. This is a symmetrical diagram. So we can easily find Ra dash and Rb1 dash. To find both of them, we have to divide the area by 2. The area formula of a triangle is half into BH. Here the breadth is 6 and the height is 80 upon EI. When we divide the area by 2, we will get Ra dash and Rb1 dash as 120 upon EI. Now let us take the beam B dash C dash. This is also a symmetrical diagram. So we can easily find Rb2 dash and Rc dash. We have to divide the area by 2. The area formula of a second degree parabola is 2 upon 3 pH. Here the breadth is 4 and the height is 60 upon EI. So for Rb2 dash and Rc dash, we will get 80 upon EI. Now let us find delta 1L that is the slope in the point A, theta A. In the conjugate beam, that will be the shear force at A dash, that is Ra dash. We know that Ra dash is 120 upon EI. So delta 1L will be 120 upon EI. Now let us find delta 2L, that is the slope in the point B, theta B, which will be equal to Rb dash in the conjugate beam. We need to add these two reactions. After adding, we will get delta 2L, which is 200 upon EI. Now we are going to find these four displacements. Delta 1, 2 and delta 2, 1 will be same. First, let us find delta 1, 1 and delta 1, 2. For that, in the first coordinate, we have to apply unit movement. Our first coordinate is MA. So in the direction of MA, we have to apply unit movement. Here you can see that I have removed all of the loads and I have applied unit movement in the direction of MA. Again, to find the displacements, we can use the conjugate B method. We need to draw M upon EI diagram. First, let us take the beam AB. Using the right hand side rule, we can find the movements. In the point A, we have unit movement. It is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. The point B is a simply supported end. So the movement will be 0. Let us find M upon EI. M will be minus 1. And instead of EI, we have to apply 1.5 EI. Since it is negative, the UVL should be acting upwards. Now let us take the beam BC. In the beam BC, there is no load or movement. So throughout the beam, the movement will be 0. In this case, no need to consider beam BC. Since the UVL is acting upwards, the vertical reactions will be acting downwards. To find Ra dash, let us take movement about B dash. In this case, we have to follow right hand side rule. Ra dash is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 6. The UVL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive. For the UVL, we have to multiply the area with the centroid distance. The area formula is half into BH. Here the breadth is 6 and this is the height. The centroid distance about B dash is 2 upon 3 into breadth. So 2 upon 3 into 6. For Ra dash, we will get 4 upon 3 EI. We can easily find Rb1 dash. We have to subtract Ra dash by the total load. Area is the total load. We already found that. The area minus Ra dash, we will get Rb1 dash, which is 2 upon 3 EI. Now let us find delta 1 1, that is the slope in the point A, theta A, which is the shear force at A dash in the conjugate beam, that will be Ra dash. Ra dash is acting downwards, so it will be negative. 
So for delta 1 1 we will get minus 4 upon 3 EI. Now let us find delta 1 2 that is the slope in the point B theta P which is RB dash in the conjugative P. It is acting downwards so it will be negative. Now we are going to find delta 2 1 and delta 2 2. We need to apply unit movement in the direction of MP. You can see that I have applied unit movement in the direction of MP. Now we have to draw M upon EI diagram. First let us take the beam AB. In the point B the movement is minus 1 and in the point A the movement is 0. So M upon EI will be minus 1 upon 1.5 EI. Since it is negative, the UVL should be acting upwards. Now let us take the beam BC. In the point B, the moment will be minus 1 and in the point C, the moment will be 0. M upon EI will be minus 1 upon 2 EI. Since it is negative, the UVL should be acting upwards. To find RA dash, let us take a moment about B dash. RA dash is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 6. The UVL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive. For the UVL, we have to multiply the area with the centroid distance. Area formula is half into BH. Here the breadth is 6 and this is the height. So this is the area. The centroid distance about B dash is 1 upon 3 into breadth. So 1 upon 3 into 6. For area dash we will get 2 upon 3 EI. To find RB1 dash we have to subtract area dash by the area. For RB1 dash, we will get 4 upon 3 EI. To find RB2 dash, let us take a moment about to C dash. RB2 dash is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 4. The UVL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive. This is the area. The centroid distance about to C dash is 2 upon 3 into breadth. Here the breadth is 4. So 2 upon 3 into 4. For RB2 dash, we will get 2 upon 3 EI. Now let us find delta 2 1 in the conjugate beam that is RA dash, which is 2 upon 3 EI. Since it is acting downwards, it will be negative. Now let us find delta 2 2 that is RB dash. We need to add these two since they are acting downwards both of them will be negative. For delta 2 2 we will get this. In these two equations we have found everything. Let us apply them. Then we can make these two equations. Using the calculator we can solve these two equations. For MA we will get 48 kN meter and for MP we will get 84 kilonewton meter. For both of them, we have got the positive values. That means our assumption is correct. They are hogging moments. Now let us take the original beam using MA and MP. We can find the vertical reactions. To find RA, let us take a moment about to B. RA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 6. So 6 RA. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. 80 kN is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 3. MP is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive. For RA we will get 34 kN now from the point C, let us take a moment about to B to find RC. In this case, we have to follow left hand side rule. RC is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 4. 
the UDL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. With the UDL, we have to multiply the distance and then the distance by 2. MB is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be positive. For RC, we will get 99 kN. Then by applying this rule, we can find RB. Now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram by superposition method. First we have to assume every span as a separate assembly supported beam. Then using these formulas, we can find the maximum bending moments and we can draw these two diagrams. Using the moments at A and at B, we can draw the end moment diagram. Since these two moments are hogging, the end moment diagram will be negative. Then by combining these two diagrams, we can draw the bending moment diagram by superposition method. Using the right hand side rule, we can find the shear force values. Here you can see the shear force diagram. In this point, the shear force becomes zero. For the span BC, in this point, there will be maximum positive bending moment. In this point, we can make a section and find the distance. You can see that in that point, I have made a section at a distance of X from C. We know that in this section, the shear force is zero. Using that concept, we can find X. For X, we will get 1.65 meter. Using the left hand side rule, let us find the maximum positive bending moment. RC is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 1.65. The UDL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. We know that with the UDL we have to multiply the distance and then the distance by 2. This is the maximum positive bending moment at BC. The point C is a simply supported end, so the moment will be 0. Now let us find the moment at B. RC is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so that it will be positive and the distance is 4. The UDL is acting in the clockwise direction, so that it will be negative. With the UDL, we have to multiply the distance and then the distance by 2. We will get to minus 84. To find the moment at A, we can use right hand side rule. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. Now let us find the moment at D. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. Or A is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 3. Finally, we will get 54. This is the proper bending moment diagram. If we make this diagram upside down, that is called bending moment diagram on the tension side. In these three points, the bending moment becomes zero. These are the points of contraflexure. We can make sections in these three points and find the distances. You can see that in those points I have made sections. Using right hand side rule, we can find this distance. For that we will get 1.41. To find this distance x, again we can use right hand side rule. Using that we will get 4.17. Then to find this distance x, we can use left hand side rule. Using that rule, we will get 3.3 meter.